you don't see your parents a lot if they're in the army? It's hard being a kid when your parents are not there a lot and sometimes you struggle through school. Katie Hunter has struggled a lot since her father was deployed in January, the fourth time in her 11 years that he's been sent away. But the fifth grader has another worry on her mind, her aging school building at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. You notice all the leaks when it's raining outside, and sometimes the bathrooms get stuffed up, and all the tile keeps coming up. There's also mold along the walls, loud air conditioners that disrupt classes, and cracks tearing apart the foundation. I take my finger and stick it through. In lots of places, we have, it needs a lot of work. Katie's school is hardly unique. An investigation by iWatch News found that many of the nearly 350 schools on military bases across the globe are in dire need of repair or replacement. I think that some of the facilities that serve our military kids are a national disgrace. That says a message that the country doesn't really care about your, your family's service. The White House has pledged in America where every military child has the support they need to grow and learn and realize their dreams. But those dreams may be harder to reach for the nearly 1.2 million children of U.S. service members like Katie, who have spent the past decade of war living without a parent for many months of their lives. We have children who are casualties of these wars. When you put the war and the deployment and that stress on top of it, it creates a lot of challenges that even the families who are most dedicated, most patriotic, most willing to serve, that, that they sometimes can't handle. The Pentagon declined to provide anyone for an interview on camera, but one of the department's top officials overseeing family issues said the military has created a task force to explore remedies. We'll be very focused on making significant changes which will provide a world-class educational environment for our kids. The Pentagon likes to say that students are resilient, but some research suggests otherwise. Many are suffering from mental health problems. Though enrollment in the military health care system has hardly changed, data from the TRICARE system shows an 18% increase in psychiatric medication taken by military children between 2005 and 2009. And a study by the RAND Corporation shows that the longer a parent is deployed, the more likely children are to have trouble in classes. Kids are tremendously resilient, but that stress does build up and accumulate, um, particularly now that we've been in these wars for 10 plus years. Katie has certainly struggled in class. Usually she would be the first one to bounce back this last deployment. She just, she just didn't do it. She wouldn't ask for any help with any of her homework. Um, she wouldn't bring homework home. She would forget to even tell me I have homework. And it took, you know, about probably a month to get her back focused. When they, like, first leave, you're like worried if they're going to be okay on the way over. It is scary, isn't it? Yeah. Katie had a particularly hard time when her father was supposed to come back for a break from Iraq. We drove to Dallas and she stood there waiting for her dad to get off that plane and he didn't get off that plane. She just was on her hands and knees crying. The next day they made sure he was like one of the first few people off that plane that day because she was devastated. And I think that's why him leaving, it's like, is he going to come back? Katie's two sisters have had trouble with their father's deployment as well, though his latest post to Korea may be safer than when he was in war zones in Iraq and Afghanistan. He's still gone. There are different milestones that he misses. He just missed Brittany's 13th birthday. And he's going to miss Katie, her promotion out of elementary school this year. And it's things like that that he he's missed their whole life. Every time he comes home from a long trip, I'll always ask him what my favorite color is and I, like everything like that. I just change a lot, so I try and help him out because I know it's not his fault. 
Katie's family and school aren't the only ones struggling. Studies by the military show that 75% of schools on bases worldwide are in substandard condition. One school in Stuttgart, Germany, is housed in a former Nazi barrack. And at Fort Lewis in Washington State, students have to deal with overcrowding. As a teacher, it's affected my class size. Christina Coakley is a mother of three whose kids are being educated in base schools. She believes that military kids are being left behind. Just a lot is taken from them being an older school. We're building our future with these kids right here, and they're just not getting all that they need. Fixing the school facilities isn't easy either. The reason? Money. Katie's school district has plans for a new building, but even if all the funding comes through, it will be too late for her to enjoy it. And it won't reverse the impact of her father's long absences. How the deployments will affect Katie and her sisters in the long term is the big question. The military family has traditionally been the best recruiting pool the military's had. Well, if you've been dealing with a decade of your formative years of having your parent back and forth and, and all kinds of family issues, are you going to be willing to serve or not? For Katie's family, that seems to be true. I've seen what it's done to my family of just taking him away, and I wouldn't want that because some of those guys experience a lot of bad things overseas. I wish my daddy would come home. <laughs>